God bless you, everybody. Let's get this right here. Okay. God bless you, everybody. God bless you one and all. I am Pastor Alona, Dr. Alona, coming to you live for Bible study. Today is Tuesday, June 14th, 2022. We're in the middle of the middle month of the year. Uh, and God bless you, big sister Phyllis. It is good to be here. Uh, I'm sorry I'm running late. Uh, Manny is in practice now for football. God bless you, Octavia. Good to see you. Uh, and so I had to get him out of practice and get home. And so here we are. Um, the time is already after 8.30, so we're going to jump right in. Hey, Myra, good to see you. Thank y'all for your patience and for your understanding. Let's pray and get this party started. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you tonight. First of all, thank you, Lord, for keeping us through this hot, hot day. Oh, my God. Father, you kept us uh, in the midst of it all. Thank you, Lord. Now we're home and winding down for the evening, and I just ask for your presence in this time together. I pray, God, that you would speak to us through your word, uh, that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that your word would just gird us up and strengthen us and encourage us and just help us to know that all is well in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for everybody that's here tonight, Father. I thank you for their patience and hanging on in here to jump on in so we can Come and dine and, and, and enjoy this time together in you, Father. I thank you for those that's going to shortly and for those that will catch it as it's replayed and as it's shared, God. But let your word do its purpose, God, that it would, would convict us, that it would encourage us. It will confirm. It would affirm. It would do everything we needed to do, God, in Jesus' name. And, and so it is. Amen. All right. Okay. Okay. So good to see you all tonight. Uh, tonight, we're picking up where we left off on Sunday. And we came from John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 6. John 21, verses 1 through 6. And tonight's teaching is really a big encourager. I want to encourage anyone and everyone who may have felt discouraged, uh, wanting to throw in the towel, uh, waiting for a breakthrough, kind of sort of sick of seeing everybody else be blessed and, and you're wondering, God, when is my turn? God, when is my breakthrough coming? When are things going to come through for me? When are things going to turn around for me? And so God took me to John 21 verses 1 through 14. It's the story when the disciples were out on the water and they were fishing and they had fished the night before and they were frustrated because they didn't catch anything. So the scripture reads this way. It says, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed himself. He showed himself. There were um, together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Deb Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto him, I go fishing. They said unto him, we'll, we'll go with you also. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Verse four says, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have you any meat? They answered him, no. And they said, he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread. And Jesus said unto them, bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter, God bless you, Clayton. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, 153. 
and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto him, come and dine. He said unto them, come and dine. And none of the, none of the disciples durst ask him, who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and gave it to them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after that he was risen from the dead. And so what I want you to get out of tonight's lesson, I'll just go straight to my points. Um, and, and again, I prefaced earlier, I want to encourage you tonight. I know um, life can be discouraging. I know life can be disappointing. I know it can be very easy to want to throw in the towel and just give up because things may not be going the way that we want them to go. We may have tried and tried. And as Donnie McClurkin said, you prayed and cried. Um, you've done everything you know to do and, and you just don't, you just, you're just done. You don't want to do anything else. You just want things to be over. You want things to change. And you're, you know, you've got patience, you've been praying and, you know, you're like, God, what do I do? And so, um, the three things that I got out of this text, the first is that sometimes we have to change our approach. Sometimes we have to change our approach. I'm sure you've heard the definition of insanity is doing the same thing the same way, expecting a different result. Uh, but when we go God's way uh, and, and, and really try to hear his voice and see a difference, sometimes we have to do things differently. And so I asked the, the question, have you tried the other side? In other words, have you tried a different approach? Have you uh, or have you continued to do uh, things the same way. That's very important, uh, especially in maybe some church settings or some family settings. It's easy to say when you're taking on a new endeavor or are you taking on a, a project? Well, we've always done it this way. Well, that's how it goes. Uh, but sometimes we have to have to try things differently. Sometimes we have to try things differently. And so have you tried the other side? Have you tried? the other side. Uh, so what are you doing? Are we taking the time to even evaluate? How am I doing things? Are we just throwing in the towel and say, I'm tired, I'm done? Um, I, I shared um, the other uh, on Sunday, even in relationships, sometimes we have to evaluate, have I been part of the problem or part of the solution? Am I repeating patterns, um, doing the same things? Uh, and then expecting things to be different. Maybe I need to look at me. And that's a hard thing to do. It's very easy to say, child, you just jacked up. You, you know, your life just all messed up. What about me? Am I willing to, to look in the mirror and say, Lord, turn the light on heaven from heaven on me, in, inspect me? What are we doing different? Sometimes we have to change our approach. The second thing God wanted me to tell you is that obedience is key because God always provides. Uh, it says now in verses uh, six, I believe it says, and Lord, I can't hold, no, verse nine. Uh, it says, as soon as they would come to the land, they saw the fire of coals there and the fish had, uh, were laid there on the head. Jesus had already prepared food for the disciples. So, but they were obedient. They didn't ask any questions. They did what he asked them to do and he provided. He asked them to bring the fish that they caught, but the blessing was what he had provided. And another part that um, I thought was really good in this, in this text was that he asked them, do you all have any meat? Do you all have anything to eat? And what that said to me is that God already knows. He knew they had not caught anything and he had already provided. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You're standing in the point of a dilemma and you are in need of some things. I'm here to tell you God already knows what you have need of. He asked them, do you have any meat? He already knew it. And before they could even um, get the fish to him that they had caught, he told them to go on the other side. They caught, but when they were obedient, then the blessing was that they caught the fish that he had for them to catch, but they didn't even have to partake of them because he had already provided. God, 
had already provided. I don't know who needs to understand this, but God says, don't worry, don't fret, don't lose another night of sleep worrying about how you're going to get through this situation or that situation. Are you being obedient to God? Are you doing what he has told you to do? Your blessing is in your obedience. And actually, if you go to the book of De Deuteronomy, you'll see that there are conditional promises. If you do this, God will do this. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat of the good of the land. That's another scripture. But Deuteronomy has a whole slew of promises. There are consequences and repercussions for our obedience. But when we are be obedient, there will be blessings. There will be blessings. So they didn't ask questions. They did. He said, how many times does God tell us to do something and we got to ask questions or we got to moan and groan about it? God is not looking for us to debate him on or our obedience, but what he is wanting us to do is go forth with whatever he has called us to do, with whatever he has asked us to do. When they came back from fishing, they saw that he had already worked a miracle. So while we're trying to figure things out, while we're trying to work things out, God is already moving on our behalf. What do we do in the meantime? We continue to be obedient. We continue to trust him. We continue to stay in his word. We continue to stay in prayer because God will provide. And then uh, verse 11 says that they caught a whole bunch of fish and they caught 153. Why did why was it important that they why why did they catch 153 first? And then why did why was it important for us to know that? Well, I always like to look at what God is saying to us through numbers. And of course, I added the five, the three, and the one, the one, the five, and the three, and that's nine. Do we not realize that nine is a number of completion? I don't know who has toiled in a certain area um, at, at, and you're at your wit's end because you're tired of it. I, I, you embrace this scripture that maybe after you cast your, set, your net on the right side, on the other side, you'll see a difference. Maybe God is saying that that season of losing in that area is over because remember, a woman carries a baby for nine months. At that ninth month, she has to push it out. I don't know what God is, 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 is who God is talking to. There may be some things that you need to birth now. You bring it in your womb long enough. It's time for it either to come out and live or it be stillborn. If it's not serving you any good, maybe it's time for it to be over. But that 153, that 153 fish is very significant. There is something that needs to be complete in your life. It could be a uh, completion of something that just was not good for you. Or it could be the completion of your toiling. But have you tried the other side? Have you tried another approach? That's the first thing. The second thing, you've got to be obedient. God is going to provide. He always comes through. He always provides. There's a scripture, I heard it this morning. I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Obedience is key. God will provide. And then the third thing, God has a dining experience for you. What do you mean, Pastor? God has a dining experience for you. What I mean is that I hope you have an appetite to receive what God has for you. The scripture says that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Look at what it says in verse 12. It says, Jesus said unto them, come and dine. That's the A clause of verse 12. He said unto them, come and dine. He did not say come and eat. When we come and eat, we come and eat and be done. But when we come and dine, that's a different type of experience. When we come and dine, God is saying you can relax. You don't have to worry anymore. You don't have to worry about cooking. You don't have to worry about clearing the table. God bless you, Sister April. You don't have to worry about uh, is the meal prepared just right? Is Are they going to like it? When you come to the table, 
mind. You're coming with an expectation that you will be filled with every, every, every physical need of the food that God wants to give you. But I'm here to tell you that God will also give you every spiritual need when you come and dine with him. He's saying, you just relax. Don't worry about what's going on. I've prepared a table for you. Does not Psalm 23 say that I've prepared a table for you even in the presence of your enemies? In other words, I'm going to take care and I'm going to see to it that those who have meant you harm, those who have come against you, I'm going to see, I'm going to make sure they see that you are blessed. So don't worry. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. God says, come and dine. He's got a five course meal prepared just for you. The scripture also says, come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. We can feast on his goodness. We can feast on his grace. We can feast on his mercy. We can feast on his love. We can feast on his faithfulness. We can feast on everything he has to offer. Come and dine. Do not give up. Do not give in. Do not throw in the towel. Even if you have to re-navigate and start all over. I heard, I think it was Tasha Cobbs uh, who said that um, she was instructed by God to leave everything she knew and come to Atlanta. And when she got to church, the, the people were singing her song and she hasn't looked back yet. Will we trust God? when we want to give up, when we want to throw in the towel, when we see any hope, when we don't feel like things are working in our favor. I need to challenge you today, my sisters and my brothers. Have you tried the other side? God bless you, Bernard. Good to see you, family. Have you tried the other side? I know it gets rough. I know it gets tough. I know I pro you're looking at some somebody that's had many days where I was like, you know what, this ain't it. You know, I, I can just quit where I where I am now. Wanting to see another day, not wanting to put my feet on the floor because I knew what was waiting. But then there was still small voice that says, I'm not finished with you. Just like the refiner's fire, God is not finished with us until he can see our glory glory on our face until he can see a reflection of us. That's why we go through. We go through to get to. We go through changes. We go through challenges, but they're not to kill us. They're to make us stronger. They're to make us better. They're to make us wiser. And I promise you, if you've seen anybody who has ever gone through, that when they get to the other side, when they get to the side of the blessing, when they get to the side of the miracle, they can testify that God was not trying to kill me. Sometimes I know I've looked back in situations and say, God, I know that was you protecting me, keeping me out of harm's way, uh, wrapping your loving arms around me of protection and of provision. That's the kind of God that we serve. If you've been trying to figure things out on your own, Try the other side. Without God, I could do nothing. Without him, I would fail. It's in him that I live, move, have my being. Stop trying to do things on your own. There are some things that we have to give to God. Cast all your burdens on him. Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Have you tried the other side? And let me be clear. I shared this on Sunday. When I say, have you tried the other side? I'm not meaning the other side of the rainbow. I'm I'm not meaning the other side uh, where you come over here and, and try this lifestyle. That's not what I'm speaking about. That is not of God. But what I am saying is try the side of God that parallels with his word. Try the side that 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 lines up with his will and his way. And sometimes we have to do things differently. God bless you, Deacon James. Praying for you, brother. We have to do things differently. Uh, there's a passage in Deuteronomy, I believe, that says you compassed around this mountain long enough. It's time to turn and go north. The other side could be north when we've been trying to go south. God is our navigator. 
He is the one that orchestrates our steps. That is why the psalmist said, order my steps, O Lord, in your word. God bless you, cousin Janice. Lead me, guide me every day. Have you tried the other side? You've tried things your way. But God says, I need you to try my way. Try a different approach. A different approach cannot be what we want to do in our flesh. It has to be spirit led because our flesh will have us doing any and everything that we think we are big and bad enough to do. God bless you, Sister Connie. Have we tried God's way? I'm talking to the sister, to the brother that says, I'm tired. I can't go any further. God says now is not the time to give up. Renavigate if you must, but do not give up. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Why? Because he's able. God is the God that can do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. So the first point that I gave you, we're in John 21 verses 1 through 15, where the disciples were out. They were out fishing and been out there all night long. God bless you, Brother Joseph. They have been out there all night long. Nothing happened. Do you not know, um, fishermen, I'm, I'm told that nighttime is the best time to fish and you out there all night and nothing's happening. That can be frustrating. You may have a loved one uh, that's, you know, sick. And, 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 and no matter what you do, it's not seeming to console her. I've been there. I, I had to cradle my sister in my arms and, 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 and there was times when she, I couldn't do anything to console her. And that's heartbreaking. But guess what? I couldn't stop trying to be of comfort to her. I had to try things differently. What is our approach? And if we don't know, the Bible says, if we if we need wisdom, ask God, Lord, show me which way I need to go. And it's important to stay in tune with him, because as long as we're in tune with him, we hear his voice and not the voice of our flesh. Because, again, our flesh will lead us wrong every time. Our flesh will have us cutting people and cussing them out. And that's, we know that's not God's way. The second thing in the first point uh, came from verse, verse six. He told him to go on the other side. So that's our first point. Try a new approach. The second point is that obedience is key. God always provides. And we saw that in verses nine through 11. They went to catch the fish, but when they came back, he had already prepared the fish for them. He had already provided food for them. And he asked, do you all have anything to eat? He knew God knows what we're going through. He knows what we're going through, but he asked them that question to see what effort they would put forth. So sometimes we're looking for answers and we're looking for everybody else to come out and help us. God is saying, I'm going to challenge you to do what you can to help yourself. You do to help yourself. He sent them back out there to fish knowing full well he had already provided for them. So what is he saying? God has always got our back. He's going to provide. But sometimes he's looking for us to do what we can. We're looking, he's looking for us to do what we can to help ourselves. The third thing, he wants to give us a dining experience. He wants to feed us. He wants to take care of us. Anything that God does is right and good. Have you ever seen somebody just flourish? Or have you ever seen a situation just come together and you say, I know God had his hands in that. Why? Because God is a God of excellence. Everything that he in intends to do for us, he wants to do it in high quality. He wants to do it first class. So he didn't tell them come and eat. He said, come and dine, come and taste the food. Come and let it savor in your mouth. Don't just guzzle it down, gobble it down because you're hungry. Take the time to taste and see that God is good. 
God, that's it, Deacon James. God helps those who help themselves. And so it's easy to get caught up in a pity party. Oh my God, I got to do all this stuff by myself. I need some help. Every time I need some help, and I know how that feeling can be. Every time I need help, I'm helping everybody. But when I need help, who's here to help me? God saying, don't stay in that pity party. Rise up, take your bed and walk. God's got a blessing. Don't be weary in well-doing for in due season, you're going to reap. But the key is we cannot faint. So I just want to encourage you to hold on. God has not forgotten you. He, I'm having to talk to myself too. He hasn't forgotten me. Sometimes it gets frustrating. Sometimes we get lonely. Sometimes we feel like God has forsaken us. I, we can empathize when God was on that cross and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I know you promised you would be with me always, even to the end of the world. But God, I feel so alone. I feel like you just forgot about my little situation. I just feel like everybody's getting blessed and, you know, and I'm struggling. But God has not forgotten I need you to hold on. I need you to hold on to Isaiah's passage where he says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hold on. Hold on to your hope. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to the promises of God. Hold on to the promises that he has already fulfilled, knowing that if he's done it before, he will come through again. Why? Because he never fails. He never fails. Do not give in to discouragement. God, you're faithful. You never fail me yet. And so I encourage you, have you tried the other side? Have you tried a different approach? Have you done things differently? The second thing he told me to tell you is that obedience is key because God will always provide. He'll ask you, a question that he already knows the answer to just as you're going to respond. So know that God will come through, but when we don't obey, we could miss our blessings and then come and die. And God wants us to experience the blessings that he has for us. I posted today about having a good laugh. When was the last time you had a good laugh? Sometimes we get so caught up into the dilemmas that we're facing, that we miss the blessings that God is trying to send our way. And sometimes it doesn't seem like it because we're crying, because we're hurting, because we're heartbroken, because we feel alone. But in that last set of verses, nine through 11, he says, come and dine. Come and take the time to Eat your appetizer and take your time to eat your, your, your main course. Eat your time, take your time to even eat your salad. I eat my salad last, y'all, because um, my food would be cold. <laughs> because my food would be cold if I eat my salad last. I've just always been like that. I want my food to be hot. But God is saying, come and dine. Relax. Exhale. Breathe in and breathe out. God has got you. He is not going to leave you on the side of the road trying to fend for yourself. He says, come on in. I got the table spread for you. If you drink wine with your meal, he's saying, enjoy the wine. If you drink red Kool-Aid with your meal, enjoy your red Kool-Aid. If you enjoy your water with your meal, enjoy it. Come and dine. You don't got to worry about cleaning the kitchen. You don't have to worry about cleaning the, uh, the, the dishes. None of that. The table is already spread. He says, come on and dine. I've got a blessing for you. I've already provided for it. Don't worry about where it's coming from. Don't worry about what, you know, what I got to do to get it. Don't worry. I got it. God's already taken care of it. So I need you to hold on. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. God is faithful. You're looking at a miracle. If anybody give up and be out of here, I could say I am that one. But here I am by the grace of God 
uh, standing on his amazing grace, believing that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think, believing that he is a God of a second chance, believing that he uh, can give favor, grace and mercy, believing that he is capable of doing everything that he said he would do, believing that he's able to dry up tear-stained eyes, believing that he is able to mend broken hearts, believing that he is providing, uh, able to provide, believing that he's able to open doors, believing that he's able to shut doors that were meant to harm me, God is able. He is all of that and more. Yes, kind of. We are standing on the promises of God. You remember that song we used to sing years ago? I'm standing on the promises of God and I believe he'll do just what he said. No more doubt and disbelief causing my faith to decrease all the more. I'll take him at his word and I'll trust and never doubt. I'll stand upon his promises because Lord, I believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? How many miracles have we heard of in the word of God? And he comes back and says, according to faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. Y'all, we got to have childlike faith. We got to believe we're living in an age now where you got to prove everything to everybody. You got so many theologians uh, that's got all these theories and, and challenge the word of God. But I remember being a, a, a child and learning in Sunday school that Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed the multitudes. Nowadays, you got to show people what kind of fish it was and what kind of bread it was for them to believe it. I'm, I'm not going, if God said it, I believe it, that settles it. And if you can't get with the Bible stories, just reach back in your own archives and think about all the ways that he's made for you. Think about all the doors he's opened for you. Think about all the miracles he's worked in your life. I've got a testimony myself. There was a problem going on in my body years ago with my thyroid. The said that, that I, I had a, a thyroid problem and I was like, the devil is a liar. And uh, they said, well, Ms. Jernigan, yeah, you do you do got this problem. I said, well, okay. Um, and so they gave me an alternative. They gave me, told me that I could either take this pill or uh, that they could give me some kind of um, radiation or they could cut me. I said no to either one of them. First of all, uh, you're not going to give me no chemo for no radiation. Uh, you're not going to cut me because ain't nobody cutting that close to, to that no vein in my neck. And the pill was out because Manny was a baby and he was clingy and I had to be isolated. And I said, there's no way on God's green earth I'm going to be able to be in the same house with this little boy and isolate for no days at a time. So I said, no, I can't do either one of them. So they said, well, you know, I said, I tell you what, y'all get with y'all doctors and, 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 and y'all medical staff and I get with my people and my people was Jesus. They gave me some medication to take. Well, prior to that, they had given me the medication and the medications were confused. They said, you're listening to two doctors. You can't listen to the thyroid doctor and the PCP and, and, you, got to, and you can't listen to both of them. It's like having two cooks in the kitchen. So all, all my results ended up being confused. When I came back, do you not know I didn't have a sign of any kind of thyroid problem? They didn't know what, they, they didn't know what happened. But I stood on the promises of God. The promises of God says that I'm healed. And I stood on that promise and it came to pass. I have not had a problem with thyroid since that time. And Manny is 17 years old. So you can't tell me about what the promises of God won't do. You can't tell me what my God can't do because I can reach back in my archives. I can reach back on my shelf and I can pull down testimony after testimony and tell you how he's come through and how he's healed my body and how he's given me a sound mind and how he's allowed me to rise up and take my bed and walk, how he allowed me to prove the devil a liar. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. We got to stand on the promises of God. God is a healer. He is a deliverer. He's a protector. He's a provider. He's a friend unfailing. He is everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Don't give up, please. Cry if you must. Another song we used to sing, Connie, uh, are your tears are, are, are just a release. They're a, 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 an expression uh, that can't be controlled. A little crying night, a little crying now is all right. But in the morning, it'll be all right. Don't you worry. No, 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 no. God will wipe every one of our tears away. So the tears are healthy. They're cleansing. They're purifying. They're allowing us to release those things that we've bottled up for so long. Don't be so strong that you cannot cry and feel how you feel. But do not stay in that pity party because the enemy will try to steal your joy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I need you to hold on. I, I wish you could see the great things that God has prepared for his children. The word says, eyes, we, can't even, we can't even see it. We, can, we can't even conceive it. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. It's working for your good. It may not seem like it. It may not feel like it, but I need you to hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If you need somebody to pray with you, call me, call somebody. Get you an accountability partner. More than anything, tell it to Jesus. But if you just need to touch and agree with somebody, don't try to walk this road by yourself. And sometimes it's hard to do that because people have disappointed us. We share things in confidence with people. And the next thing we know, our business is everywhere. And you're like, well, I can't tell that one to that, tell anything to that one again, because I didn't mean for them to tell everybody. But ask God to give you a release of wisdom and discernment. God, who will you send on this earth to be my accountability partner? Yes, and that's just it. Um, God, help me to hold on a little while longer. Hold to his unchanging hand. That's it, Deacon James. Hold to his hand. People change, seasons change, but God never changes. He never fails. Well, I used to have a bumper t bumper sticker. Let me see if I remember what it says. Uh, smoke leaves you breathless. Alcohol leaves you senseless. But Jesus won't leave you regardless. Isn't that good to know? Isn't that good news? Even when we mess up. I think my friend Deborah Clark posted the other day, the good thing about God is that He'll get us out of situations that we know full well we got ourselves in and he won't even hold it against us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from righteousness. Who serve a God like that? How many times do we mess up? How many times do we go to the left? And he's like, girl, you did not take, did I tell you to go to the right? You just had to go to the left, but he lovingly, steers us in the right direction and gives us another chance. My God is awesome. He is amazing. Absolutely amazing. That is the kind of God we serve. God bless you, Tequila. He is awesome. Awesome in every way. Have you tried him? Do you know him? He is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. So tonight, I asked the question, have you tried the other side? And we came from John 21, verses 1 through 14. We looked at the disciples after they had there all night long, looking to catch some fish, nothing. And then the scripture said, in the morning, Jesus was there. Don't y'all know something happens when Jesus shows up on our behalf? He changes everything. He works everything out for our good. He changes the, the trajectory. He flips the script. He works it out for our good. So I'm, I'm here to tell you, have you tried the other side? Maybe we need to change our approach, do some things differently, still with the same common goal. The goal was to catch the fish. 
and they achieved that goal. They just had to do a different approach. Your approach may be to how do I achieve unity in my family? Now, if you tried family meetings and they turned into family feud, that ain't the approach if you tried it that way too many times and y'all end up fighting every time. But maybe you need to get an unbiased mediator to do the family meeting. That's a different approach. If you're trying to lose weight and you know you're trying to lose weight and you, your problem is with eating, I think I heard Pastor Jamal Bryant give an analogy yesterday. He had me on the floor talking about you salty, so you eating chips. No, you got to find another way to feed into that craving. What can you replace it with? Try a different approach. You looking for love and love done fail you two, three, four, ten times. That means it's time to go back and evaluate what did I do in previous relationships because I don't want to go down that road again. I told y'all Sunday, I bet you I won't get in. And not after what I know, I bet you I won't get God again. Why? Because I've learned some lessons. I got to try the other side. I can't do the same thing the same way and expect a different result. OK, so try a different approach. Know that God, we got to be obedient and that God will always provide. We'll see his provision. They saw his provision through their obedience. He had already provided for them. Hey, Chief Keith, good to see you, my brother. And then the third thing, God says, come and dine. The table is already set. Imagine yourself at your favorite restaurant. Uh, the table is spread. They got white linens, beautiful decor. Music is playing in the background. There's laughter in the atmosphere. The table is spread. You ain't have to. Matter of fact, the, the waiter came and said, how may I serve you? How may I serve you? God says the table is already spread. Don't give up. I know you might want to choke some people and catch a case, but God says, don't, don't do that. Do it my way. Come on the other side. I'm Pastor Lona. We are Late starting, we didn't get started to 8.30. Thank y'all for jumping on. I had to get Manny picked up from practice and that was a little off schedule, but we're here and I'm so grateful that y'all came on in. I pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you tonight. If you're just jumping on, go back from the beginning. I don't want you to miss not one bit of it because God is good. He is awesome. He is amazing. As my daddy used to say back in the day, if you find anything or anybody better than Jesus, call me. And he would give out his phone number, which is still the same. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to take up that mantle. If you find anything or anybody better than Jesus, holler. Call me. Tell me about it. My number is 770-256-437. I'm going to say it again. 770-256-437. 4337. It doesn't get any better than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who loves us in spite of all of our foolery, who loves us in spite of our unbelief, because sometimes our faith wavers, the one who loves us when we don't do right, the one who loves us in spite of all of our shortcomings. He's still saying, that's my child. That's my son. That's my daughter. He knows our actions. Didn't I just share the scripture? He asked them what y'all, you know, do y'all have something to eat? He knew they didn't have anything, but he blessed them anyway. I need you to stay the course. Chief, you're doing excellent out there in South Fulton. Don't worry about your haters. You keep your eyes on the Lord. You keep him the center of your joy. God bless you, Deacon Keith. Keep the main thing, the main thing. That's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm trying to let loose. When I think of the goodness of our Lord and Savior, of how he loved me in spite of myself, of how he loved me when I couldn't love myself, wasn't worthy, but he gave me another chance. I just get excited. I just get, I just get full. 
That's the God that we serve. This broadcast is brought to you by Dream to Destiny Ministries. I'm Pastor Alona. We meet here for Bible study every Tuesday, generally at eight o'clock, unless my mommy duties pull me a little late. Um, but we're here. We do uh, uh, ser services generally Sundays at 8 a.m., except for special occasions. On special occasions, we have service at one o'clock and we have it on the campus of Cornerstone Community Baptist Church, which is located at 4895 Campbellton Road in Southwest Atlanta. And I want to invite all my brothers, whether you are father, grandfather, godfather, uncle, mentor, coach, if you poured in any child's life, uh, if you don't have plans already for Sunday, join us for worship at Sunday at one o'clock. We're doing a celebration of fathers. We have a guest speaker, well, a guest, a guest, a guest presenter, because we're also going to acknowledge our uh, some of our graduates um, who have done well this year. And the, the guest is a is educator, Dr. Lonnie Edwards, who has a special word for the graduates. But I have a special word for our fathers in this celebration of fathers. We know many of you are taking on so many roles and black fathers in particular are often given a bad rap. We want to wrap our arms around you and let you know that we see you, we celebrate you and you matter. So that's Sunday at one o'clock. I also want to invite my health fanatics. If you're into health and fitness, I want to ask you to join me in the I am a father 5k run. We have uh, that's taking place this Saturday at eight o'clock at Grant Park. If you go to I am a father 5k.org, I am a father 5k.org and join as a team, you're going to see a drop down menu in desk register there. I think I just saw a a message come through from my classmate, Alicia, um, that uh, two more people just joined. So Team Destiny is growing and we're looking forward to everybody. This is for strengthening families and organ donors. Uh, so very worthy cause, $30 registration uh, for you can walk or you can run. I'm not running. I'm not running yet. I leave that to Minister Jean. She's the queen of that, but I can walk. And so I'm going to take advantage this Saturday, and I'd love to see you there. Um, we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. I'm so grateful for each of you, and thank you for hanging in here with me tonight. God, in Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for showing up with us tonight, Father. You never fail. You always come through. And I just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful time of teaching and fellowship, God, with these your beautiful and amazing and awesome and anointed sons and daughters. God, I pray that this word has been planted in each of our hearts, that we are encouraged to run on and see what the end will be. God, challenge, challenging us, you challenged us to cast our nets on the other side. There's a blessing on the other side. God, help us to press through. God, help us to have staying power and standing power to hold on, God, knowing that you've got blessings waiting for us and you telling us with open arms, inviting us in to come in and dine with you. So God, we thank you. I pray God for everyone under the sound of my voice that there's peace in their homes, joy in their heart, love all over them, Father. I pray that when they rest tonight, God, that they will rest on a pillow of peace, that every burden is taken to you and cast at your feet and we're believing by the power of the Holy Spirit that whatever we stand in need of, God, it is already done. Thank you, Lord, for working things in our favor. Thank you, Lord, for re removing all doubt and calming all fears. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the joy of the Lord, God, showing us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So, God, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify and magnify your holy name, God, for truly you are worthy. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name, and we count them done. And so it is. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you all. Thank you for being here. It's uh, 920. 
um, didn't quite make it to that hour, but the hour is well, well spent. And I just appreciate you being here. I pray you got something out of tonight. Share it with a friend or, or get them to come to the page and, and, and rewatch it. Love you all. Have a good night. See you next time. Bye-bye.